Hey guys and welcome back to Deep Learning with TensorFlow. So now we're on to section 4 and we're going to be looking at handwritten digit classification with a convolutional neural network. So in this section we're going to look at an introduction to CNNs. We haven't really um, discussed what CNN is in the past but you know you should all be kind of familiar with deep learning on a very high level and then it's just effectively matrix multiplication. So in this video we will be going through what actually is a CNN so you should know by the end of it. Then we're going to implement um, digit recognition using the MNIST data set which is nice and fun so a nice tangible application for you and so in that application first as expected and as in previous videos we're going to look at loading the data set because that's an important part of deep learning. We're then going to look at constructing the classifier. So what actual convolutional neural network will we be using to classify the digits? And then finally, we're going to set up the code to train the algorithm and then finally do some testing. So firstly, let's go to the first video. This is an introduction to CNNs. So just a little recap, so why is deep learning useful? It effectively lets the algorithm um, be trained on the data. We can just let the algorithm train specifically on the data and we don't need to do any cross-validation or feature tuning, etc. Um, they're also highly configurable and we can easily adapt our network um, using frameworks like TensorFlow. So nothing new there really, you know how great they are and um, why you're, they're useful. So just a little recap. So there's supervised machine learning algorithms that can perform a variety of tasks. And as you know, each node is connected to the other node in the next layer and effectively you feed forward the values through this graph and then you have activation functions and often we use ReLU, but you can have um, TAN functions, etc., etc. So this is all not new. You should have all know this by now. So what actually is a CNN? So a CNN is um, a convolutional neural network, as you can tell, because the primary operation is a convolution. And what a convolution is, is it effectively is matrix multiplication on a subset of the input. And why we do this is because if you're doing dimensions the size of images, you do not want to be doing matrix multiplication on the whole image. That's effectively a fully connected layer. And that is a huge amount of operations. You're effectively doing n squared, where n is the number of pixels in the image. So that's kind of almost intractable, and we stay away from that. So to get around it, we use this thing called convolutions, where we just use a subset of the image. And they're very fast and highly configurable. So let's just step through a little example here. So as you can see in pink, if you see so we've got an input here, so two nodes here, two pixels. We then will multiply these pixels by two weights and sum them together to get this one. Whereas in a fully connected layer, you might multiply all of them to get that one. And then what you do is you effectively keep going. So now to get this node, you have to ignore the arrows here. And they're kind of just a representation. And then you have another two node and you multiply to get this one. And then you keep going. So that's effectively what it's doing. It's just doing matrix multiplication. So you think we've got one by two vector here as our filter, or as our what we're multiplying by. And you just multiply those and off you go. So what are filters? So filters are effectively the weights that we learn for the algorithm. And they're what we do, them, what we multiply the input values by. And we can have several filters at each layer. And this is called a filter bank. So you imagine here, imagine this is some, let's say three by three filter. So we'll start up here at the three by three um, image values and then multiply them, sum them, and we'll put a little value there. And similarly with this filter, so the second most thing we'll multiply up by here, and then that will represent that row and so on and so on and so on. So this effectively extends the dimensionality of the tensor. So we are now getting adding a depth series, a depth information. Well, not necessarily depth, 
but um, the tensor is becoming three-dimensional. We're now encoding three-dimensional information into here. And this can be thought of as a feature representation of this group of pixels, this patch. So it's important to know that uh, so your output size is going to be approximately your height minus your filter size because you have two and a half up here. Well, half of your filter size is missing up here and half of your filter size is missing here. Um, similarly in that direction, but the depth is then going to be equal to the number of filters. So just remember that if, when we're doing our calculation. Um, yeah, so this just rem remember kind of this is standard notation as well to uh, indicate a convolution. So this is kind of what's going to be happening in the network. So imagine this is an image and then you multiply. So for each of these, you do a convolution and then you get this one. You'll get, you put um, a tensor here and you almost concatenate them in this dimension. So it might be worth just having a look at that and kind of digesting it in your head because it might make life a lot easier for you later on. Good. So um, I hope that was a very brief introduction, um, but then that's all you need to know. Really, they are quite simple. Just think of it as matrix multiplication on a subset, but you can have multiple values to multiply by. And then you get a, this depth aspect to your tensor.